In today's video, I go in search of some simple compositions. I'm looking for some trees in canola paddocks, and I've shot in this area before with some wonderful compositions, but not so much with the canola, and that is something that is seasonal, and it's something I'm looking for today. You know, there's an old saying in life that the simple things are often the best things. And you know, I would suggest that is 100% accurate. So here I am on this beautiful morning with my cuppa in hand, just out here in the gorgeous Australian landscape, enjoying life. I mean, what could be better than that? Well, hang on, there is one thing that I'm gonna to add to this that makes it absolutely perfect. Let's have a look. <laughs> have a look at this beauty. Look at that. I'm back on the rumbles. Wow, it's been a little while and I dropped into the bakery on the way out here. This is gonna make my adventure even more awesome than what it was going to be anyway. Oh, hmm. Absolutely beautiful. You know, someone said to me just recently, with all the food that they see me eating, how do I stay so slim? Well, I guess it's genetics. I'll tell you what else it might be. Chasing things at night time, running around in paddocks, shining torches and flashlights all over the place. I work it off, I can tell you. But anyway, We've got an adventure today and I want to show you a location that I shot at just last night. But it wasn't quite as simple as you may believe. All right, I'm going to enjoy this and then we're going to get on the road and I'm going to show you exactly where I went. Okay, so here we are. I have been frustrated to death the last couple of days because I have actually been searching for a single tree standing in a canola paddock. Now at the moment, it's the end of August. We have a beautiful carpet of canola. Now it's pretty early this year to be honest. Normally it's September, start of October, you get the best display of canola. So you can see I've found a tree in the background here which is standing in that canola crop. And I could not be happier about that. But I have spent a couple of days driving around the countryside trying to find such a composition as this. And you would think, well, there's canola fields everywhere and there's trees everywhere. But I'll tell you what, getting one tree standing in the right position, because I don't want to wade through all of these paddocks of canola, that's not the right thing to do. It's, it's wet and muddy, we've had a lot of rain, and I don't know the owners of the properties around here. It's just not the right thing to do. So I'm looking for one that's close to the road so that I can access it. And not only that, it's gotta be facing in the right direction. And that, I'll tell you what, it is not an easy thing to do, but I found one. How about that? Okay, so as you can see here, I've got this location with the tree in the uh, canola field and it's very close to the fence. And that's so good because I don't have to actually enter the paddock at all to shoot this. And I've determined I can walk down the fence line here, shine my torch across to light the tree and the field of canola, and I don't have to go inside. So that's a win-win situation. Now, 
This composition is perfect because the Milky Way core, galactic core, sets down at about midnight or thereabouts. It'll be right behind this tree. So uh, there's enough open space there for me to do the composition that I'm looking for without getting all of these trees here. And so this is one of the things. Now I did a video recently talking about composition. I talked about uh, choosing focal lengths to uh, sort of complement the composition that we're choosing. And so that's exactly what the decision I had to make here when I was here uh, last night, because this is when I shot this, and I had to work out, okay, this is where I wanna put the camera. I wanna capture the tree. I wanna capture the canola in the field. What focal length am I going to use? Now, a lot of us default to wide angles. So I could have just thought, okay, I'll get my 20 mil lens. That's, that's my most popular lens. Shoot down there, and I know I'll get everything in. But you know, with a 20 millimeter lens, I'd probably be getting a little bit too much of the peripheral, these branches of the trees, too much of the close foreground. Because remember, I'm not going right up to the tree. So what I decided I'd do is actually shoot this with my 35 millimeter lens. So that means I'm zooming in and pushing into the tree a little bit, and I can still shoot it from back here on the fence line. So I shot this with my Nikon Z6 H Alpha modded camera, that's it here, in my 35 millimeter Nikon F1.8 lens. And that was the perfect focal length to be shooting from here across this field with the tree in the background. And the way that I shot this, I decided initially I was gonna use a tracked sky. So I had my tracker here as well, set up here, shoot the sky. Now I shot the sky when it was just above the tree. So I shot the, the sky shot with the tracker first. I actually shot 10 images. Now I don't necessarily know if I'll use all of those 10. I might stack the 10 together. I could just use single shots if I wanted for that sky. But at least I've got the options there to be able to use whatever I've shot. And that's one of the things I'd uh, like to mention here because when we're out in the field shooting our nightscape photography, I think it's really important that we're planning ahead to the post-production stage. So for me here, I'm thinking, okay, I'm sitting here in the dark, contemplating how I'm going to be editing these images. And what I'm gonna do as far as blending, light painting, and all of those things with the edit in mind. And I think that's a key. With nightscape photography, we have to spend so much time in post-production that it just has to be a major consideration when we're shooting. So anyway, I had my tracker, shot my sky. Uh, by the way, iOptron Sky Guider Pro with the iPolar scope lined it up to the South Celestial Pole, which is just down there. It's a piece of cake, really. It doesn't take a whole lot of effort. Um, car's right there, so I'm only about three or four meters away from the, the car. It's really simple. And so the tree, then I shot the one shot for the tree, one exposure uh, at, let me think, it was F 2.8, uh, ISO 6400, and I shot, I think it was 15 seconds. Now don't quote me on that. I, oh gee, it was only last night, but anyway, I shot a 15 second shutter speed. Now a lot of you are gonna say, oh, 15 seconds at 35 millimeters, that's way too long a shutter speed. You'll get star trials. Well, you know what? I don't care. You know why I don't care? Because that exposure is simply to use as a background for my sky replacement. When I do my tracked sky, I'm gonna replace that sky. So I was just looking for an ambient exposure that would probably match about the right amount of exposure for my tracked sky. And that is a very important consideration. And so after that, I stopped down my aperture a little bit. I think it was about F4 to shoot my foreground subjects. And I, then I shot light painted images for the foreground. Uh, I think it was still 15 second shutter speeds. And then the ISO was around about 1250. I've said to you before, but you know, the, the light painted exposures can vary a long way. So, you know, sometimes I shoot at ISO 500, sometimes I shoot at ISO 800, sometimes uh, 1200, sometimes 1600. It doesn't really matter. I'm just lowering that ISO down to more of the sweet spot of the camera. With the Nikon Z6, and, and to be honest, most of the modern day cameras, especially the mirrorless versions, um, the ISO, they, they perform really, really well at various ISO uh, settings. And so I shot two images, one pretty much of the tree and one of the foreground canola there. And with the intention of throwing all of that into Photoshop 
and blending it together and ending up with the image that you can see now on the screen. And so that is about it. It's not necessarily a complicated procedure to shoot a Nightscape image, but as I mentioned earlier, the key is in the preparation and the planning. So first thing, I'm searching around the countryside looking for a place to shoot and a composition, and that can take an awful long time. So don't skimp on that part of the procedure. Then when I'm here on location, I have all my gear ready to go and I have it laid out for me. I know the procedures that I'm going to do. So for me here, I shot my tracked sky first and then I had that in the bag. The reason I do that often is because sometimes the sky, the clouds come in or something else happens and you can't get that shot. So I took that shot first, then I adjusted my settings, shot my light painted foregrounds and Bob is your uncle and we have our exposure. So anyway, thank you so much for joining in today. I really appreciate the fact that you're watching me once again. And uh, I'm looking forward to this time of year because that Milky Way down lower to the sky, it enables a lot of various compositions. So I'm gonna be out scouting, looking for something else to shoot and bring to you guys next time. So have a fantastic week and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.